Right, OK, so here we go. And as I said during the intro, what we're going to be covering here is the different OSPF states where different OSPF routers will hopefully, ideally, in a good world, get up to a working adjacency, i.e. they're exchanging their different network prefixes, which are advertised in the different L LSAs, both inside an area and also to, into a different area if you are an ABR. So what I'll be going through are what those states are uh, from A to B, from not working to working, obviously put this onto the diagram here just so it makes it hopefully a bit more sense and I'll also be backing that up with a virtual lab so let's go okay so here's the very first state itself so the very first state is what's known as down so I'm sure this probably speaks for itself this is when there's not really any OSPF uh, actual adjacency itself it's not really there it's not established but it's still classed as one as the OSPF states because you have configured an OSPF uh, configuration of some type. Uh, and what happens here is when you've done that configuration is hello packets, i.e. that hello OSPF packets, are going to be transmitted out of that interface onto that actual uh, link itself. And what we're doing here is we're basically making sure, you know, is anyone actually there? Is anyone actually responding to this hello packet? Am I going to see anything return? Is anyone there? Hence, we're sending out hello packets. And what we're advertising here is our own router ID. So here, uh, if I move over to uh, this APR, and I'll just move my pad over. Here, we've got our down state. And what will happen initially is this ABR with this router ID 1.1.1.1, um, obviously slash 32, it's going to send a hello packet over to the backbone router. Um, but because this hasn't been actually configured with anything yet with an OSPF configuration, it's just going to ignore it. It's just going to drop those packets because it hasn't got an OSPF configuration. But when you then configure OSPF on the backbone router, it will also then go into the down state, the very first state itself. And then it will start transmitting those OSPF hello packets over to the uh, ABR router. So this will also be a hello packet. So in here would be this router ID of 1.1.1. 1.1 and over here it will have the uh, router ID of 1.1.1.10 as you can see on the top there's those router IDs. Now when the ABR receives that hello packet over or from the link over uh, from the backbone router over the link it then goes into the next stage i.e the initialization stage. So the next stage is initialization. What there is is that a router has received, so I'm just going to do RXD for received OSPF packets, i.e., the OSPF hello, and it could see the adjacent router ID which is great because then it knows, the ABR knows that, ah, there's another OSPF router out there with this router ID of 1.1.1.1.10, uh, and it's across this interface with an IP address of 192.168.2.2 slash 30. So what it then does is the ABR will then transmit back another hello packet. So it will then say, ah, I can see you now. Hello. My router ID is 1.1.1.1. And it will also include the router ID which it saw in this hello packet. And that's important because when the backbone router receives this hello packet from the ABR, it's then going to transition into the next state, which is two way. So when the Backbone router has received this hello OSPF packet with the ABR's IP 
uh, root ID, but also seeing within that hello packet, ah, my neighbor is 1.1.1.10, it can see that, ah, that is my root ID. It's seen, the ABI has seen me. It, it's basically acknowledged me, and I can see that we've got that two way connectivity. Hence, it now moves into a two way connectivity. Now, there's a lot of things that really happen here. So, here's where we sort of like, you know, decide. Now, are we going to build that adjacency? Now, there's a lot of factors initially in um, when we're in, in the hello packet, which will decide if an adjacency is built uh, or, or torn down immediately, like authentication, uh, not, not MTU's mismatch, but our subnet as well, area IDs, they uh, hello and dead intervals, they have to match, otherwise OSPF will not continue to build the adjacency. But here is, you know, if a if you've got a designate designated router or a, and I should say a backup designated router, then the D rubbers or other type of routers, drivers or drivers, I mean how you want to pronounce it, they're going to stay in two way adjacency to other D rubbers. They will only build the last adjacency, which is full to both the DR and the BDR. OK, so basically here we're also going to decide, uh, OSPF is going to decide, are we going to carry on building that adjacency itself? And so the next step in the process of the building the adjacency is what's known as exchange start, or it's just abbreviated to X start. Now here, this is important as well. Um, so if I just put X start here, what's going to happen now is the backbone router is going to send specific OSPF packets which are known as DBD, i.e. database descriptions. But also, and please note that the ABR goes straight from a initialization straight straight into X start. It doesn't actually go into the two way state itself. And that's pretty common. Uh, that, that's very common because it can see or it's already seen this router, uh, this router ID in that hello packet it, it originally received up here and it sent its uh, router ID back here. And so there's no really real need for it to go to a two way state. It will just go straight into the X start state. But here, the API will also send back its database descriptions as well, DBD packets. As we know, in OSPF, there is this link state database, and that has to be identical, that has to be in sync uh, across all routers, all OSPF routers in the same area. You cannot have a broken, disjointed, or out of sync uh, link state database. It uh, goes against the standard. Uh, for many reasons, such as you can create routing loops, which are obviously very bad. But also what's going to happen in, in this state in the X, X start exchange is there, yes, sending the database description of the LSDB, and they're really defining here. They're saying to each other router, these, this is this is my neighbor adjacencies. This is who I can see. These are the network prefixes I can see. So they're getting to know, the routers are getting to understand who's connected to who, because this is a link state database. We've got to build the topology. And to do that, the router's got to know who's connected to who. And the database description packets initially describe in a summary, we're not going to send the whole SDB, but it's going to describe in a summary what, and I write that here, a summary of what is in the LS. DB and it sends that to the adjacent router. But also what happens here is we're going to have a master oh, master and slave election. Now the master is basically decided on the highest router ID. OK, now. 1.1.1.10 i the backbone router, this will become the master. And this will become 
the slave. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the master will be the first to exchange the DBD packets, not necessarily. If um, the, the hello process was reversed, so the ABR actually saw the hello packet of the backbone router before it advertised its hello packet, then in this case, the ABR would actually be sending the very first DBD packets. It's just the normal process that happens here. OK, um, and all of this is exchanged, by the way, over two to four dot zero dot zero dot five. This is the multicast. IP address. For OSPF, OK, uh, and once it's done in this case, so they've described what are the contents within my uh, link state database, the LSDB, it then moves into the exchange state. Now, this is really where, as the name implies, we start to exchange the LSDB or the missing prefixes, the missing network connectivity that you can see is not contained in your own router. So if router, uh, if ABR over here has 10, and they're all in the same area, of course, has 10 entries in its link state database, but over here, the backbone router only has nine, and so once the backbone router has seen all the database descriptions, either the summary of what's contained in the ABI, I could see ah, you've got 10 entries. I've only got nine entries, so I'm missing a network prefix somewhere. I'm not seeing the whole topology uh, uh, as a whole within this actual area. So. Please send me that missing prefix. So what? The backbone router would do in this case is it's going to send a link state request to its neighbor. I am requesting this prefix. I'm requesting information. So I have a complete LSDB. So here in the exchange, this is going to go into exchange as well. They're then going to start exchanging back and forth based on who is master, who is slave. They're then going to start sending link state requests. Please send me this information. And when the slave receives this uh, link state request, it is going to send that link state update and the link state update speaks for itself we are updating the missing information we're updating the backbone router into that information it's it's uh it's missing itself but what the backbone router is then going to do is going to be polite just like tcp it's then going to send an lsa ack and i'm just going to move my my port down a little bit Try and keep it all keep it all in. There we go. That's better. It's then going to send a link state acknowledgement back. So basically, what's happening here is that the backbone router is saying, you know, please send me uh, prefix one, two, three. That's going to be the link state request. The slave comes back, it's listened and says, OK, here's the link state update for one, two, three. And then the acknowledgement is sent back. That's a really terrible line there. But the link state uh, acknowledgement comes back saying, I am going to acknowledge I have received uh, the prefix for one, two, three. And it keeps going back and forth, back and forth until all LSDBs across the routers or in this case, two routers in that area are fully adjacent. And once they have exchanged all of their um, missing information, which was described initially in the database description and then requested uh, in the exchange process, we then move to the final stage, which is full, i.e. the LSDB is complete. OK. So those are the different processes, the different adjacency states of